Hello everyone. My name is Abhishek and welcome back to my channel. A lot of people ask me, Abhishek, what are the new technologies that you are learning and how do you keep yourself relevant to the market? So in this video, I will share what are the new technologies that I am learning, not only to keep myself relevant to the market, but to be very honest, also to target good companies and high paying jobs whenever I plan for a switch. Of course, I'm not sure when I will do that. It can be one year down the line, two years down the line, three years down the line, or it can be that I never switch to a different company. But it is very important for me to keep my skills updated with the emerging technologies. I understand how the market is uh, going to be in five years or 10 years down the line. So whenever there is a new technology which is emerging, I try to keep an eye on that. And if I feel that that new technology will add up to my resume or add up to my skill, then I will definitely put my hands on it and get my hands dirty. So in this video, I will share those emerging new technologies that I am learning. But before that, I think it is important to explain what I currently do so that you people will understand better why I'm learning those technologies. So I've been working on the open source from past five to six years. So I have total experience of 10 years, but only from the past five to six years, I've been uh, in the open source space. This all started when I joined F5, uh, FI networks, where our team wrote the FI Kubernetes ingress controller, which is very popular even today. And this is a complete uh, project that we wrote from the scratch. So initially, uh, very little code was written, but then, you know, our team wrote this entire Kubernetes ingress controller. And there I learned a lot about Go language because the entire uh, application, the controller was written in Golang. So I got very good exposure towards Kubernetes, the internals of Kubernetes, Golang, cloud native. We had a lot of customers. So interacting with those customers, I understood some real time DevOps challenges, uh, cloud native challenges, and also challenges with Kubernetes. Then, you know, I kept on learning uh, things related to Golang, Kubernetes and cloud native. After that, I moved to Red Hat. Currently I work with Red Hat. And from the past three years, I'm working with a team where we built a GitOps solution for our OpenShift customers. This is based on an upstream project called Argo, Argo CD. So I work on the downstream for OpenShift GitOps where we wrote this product. We have a lot of customers, but on the upstream where as an open source uh, project called Argo. So all our team contribute work towards uh, Argo. It can be writing the Argo operator, Kubernetes operator, or working on the Argo rollouts operator, Argo contributing anything that is possible with respect to the upstream project called Argo. So this is what I have been doing. Now, what are the new technologies that I'm learning? So the new technologies that I'm learning, number one is generative AI. Now, don't get confused. Uh, why are you learning generative AI saying all this background? So there is a very uh, good connection. Basically, uh, you know, if generative AI, if generative AI is going to be popular, I'm saying if because, you know, there is a lot of uncertainty at this moment. We never know how this is going to shape out. Of course, generative AI is going to be there, but how much of generative AI will be available? What are the regulations? All that I'm not sure at this point of time. But if generative AI is going to be popular, I'm in the cloud native and DevOps space, which is constantly emerging, right? So if you take chat GPT for as an example, and take Python, take any DevOps uh, emerging thing like Argo CD. Try to ask ChatGPT questions related to Python and Argo. You know, you can see the efficiency with respect to Argo will be very less because these uh, ChatGPT or the GPTs, they are not so much trained. The LLMs do not have so much knowledge on this so that ChatGPT can get the uh, efficiency. Similarly, as a DevOps engineer, there might be a lot of in-house uh, products in your organization. 
or there can be some more emerging tools like there can be cross plane when you are working on this the public gpts cannot help you that much so what i strongly believe if generative ai is going to be popular then if you learn how to build your own gpts i think that will turn out to be very handy let's take an example uh, there is a in house product in the organization that i'm going to join let's say and that product of course being an in house product chat gpt cannot answer any questions related to that or bard cannot answer any questions related to that now if i write my own gpt and train that gpt by providing the documentation of this product of course eventually uh, the efficiency will be high initially efficiency will be low but if i train my gpt on this particular documentation if i train my gpt on uh, the frequently asked questions then any new person joining the team they can directly talk to the gpt there is no need of uh, so much effort from other team members to train the candidate also you can use it just like how you are using chat gpt on a day to day basis so this is just one use case but what i believe is that build your own gpts is going to be something that is very critical in the future so that's reason one why i am learning generative ai then the second thing that i am learning is prompt engineering i think it's a uh, very straightforward why i am learning prod, prompt engineering of course we all use uh, chat gpt we all use bard so to some extent we all know how to give the prompts we all know how to play with it but it's just one use case where you know if you give better prompts to chat gpt you get the better answers but not just that when you are programmatically uh, writing some uh, generative ai scripts it is very important on the type of prompts uh, that you give to your uh, gpts so that is where i am uh, trying to understand more about prompt engineering not just for using chat gpt but programmatically uh, talking to the gpts it will be a complementary to your skill that is build your own gpts if you learn prompt engineering then uh, they will both complement each other so that's why i'm learning prompt engineering number 3 is i'm learning uh, you know i've been uh, in the development space i had past experience with python last 5 to 6 years i have good experience with golang so now i'm learning how to run, how to write uh, better scalable and better available applications as a uh, devops engineer uh, or as a person who uh, continuously talk to devops engineers and customers i know from the architecture point of view how to build that cloud native architecture for scalable and available applications but i'm also trying to learn from the developer point of view how to write this uh, scalable available applications with less footprints you know with uh, threads that do not consume lot of uh, memory how to write that kind of code also uh, you know to understand more about kios engineering how to build this entire systems so i'm learning more uh, with respect to low level design not the high level design because i think i understand the high level designs of this uh, highly scalable and available applications but now i am focusing little more on the low level designs so these are the things that i am learning i cannot share the references at this point of time because for most of these things i am in the learning phase once i learn these things then i definitely make videos along with that i'll also share the content i'll try to filter because right now i'm going through a lot of content so i'll try to filter the best out of it and whenever i'll make videos on these concepts if i don't make it i'll definitely share the references on telegram instagram wherever it is possible so thank you so much for watching the video i hope you found it useful one suggestion that i would like to give everyone learn something today rather than regretting in the future you know when you have time and when you can learn something it is better that you learn at that point of time don't think that generative ai is something okay when it comes to me i'll learn that we never know if it comes to you or if it does not come to you but what if everything will be transitioned or everything will be uh, taken lot of things will be taken over by ai let's assume that then rather regretting at that point of time if you learn the skills then you know you'll be in a better place so that's what i would like to say but before all that try to keep your fundamentals strong it's not that if you don't know devops if you are a devops engineer first learn devops 
and if you are comfortable with devops then go to the emerging technologies do not go with the emerging technologies at the beginning when you don't know your fundamentals learn the fundamentals become expert in what you are doing at this point of time then go with the emerging technologies so this is my suggestion again thank you so much for watching the video see you all in the next one take care